Good morning, guys. So, there is a verse that says that in latter times, they will heap up for themselves teachers to tickle their itching ears. The people who are the liars are the ones who have had their soul seared as with a hot iron. They will, in latter times, they will give heed to seducing spirits and things taught by demons. That's what Chris Valentin is doing. He is teaching you the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah is the doctrine of the fallen angels. Everything Bethel is doing is trying to cause you to sin on purpose. Please go back and watch the playlist that's called Kabbalah in Bethel. I think there are 16 or 17 videos in that playlist. suggest that he immediately knew that something was missing because he was both male and female at one point. Mm -hmm. How do we know that? Because the woman was taken out of the man. Right. My flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. Yeah. Where was the woman? In the man. Out of the man. He was taken yeah. out of the man. The woman was in the man. <laughs> yeah. 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 For you know, if there was a few minutes, there's a few minutes here. You can't get in touch with your feminine side because you don't have one. <laughs> the woman was taken out yeah. of the man. So where right. was the woman? In the she man. was in the man. Yeah. So God took Adam and said, okay, here's how I'm going to make sure you no longer feel lonely. I'm going to take you and I'm going to break you in half. I'm going to take the feminine side of you and I'm going to remove it from you. And when Adam woke up, I'd like to suggest that he immediately knew that something was missing because he was both male and female at one point. Mm -hmm. How do we know that? What I want to do before I proceed with anything is I want to quote from different Bible translations, Genesis 127. And I'm going to get to my point after I read the scriptures, but then I have to throw this out here. I don't necessarily support all these translations, but I'm trying to prove a point. Um, the NIV reads, so God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. The New Living Translation, so God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. The King James Bible so God created in his own image, in the image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. The Holloman Christian Standard Bible. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them, male and female. Well, uh, what I want to talk about is basically this belief and it's a Kabbalistic belief, and it's based out of the Adam Kadmon, um, of what Chris Volatin over at Bethel Church is teaching. And, you know, granted, I have to really, really strongly say this before, before I proceed. There has been, and I'm not going to name names here, um, because I don't want a, a bunch of... A bunch of stuff to start um but there has been there's a really excellent researcher who has a blog and he's done extensive research on the strong correlation between bill johnson's teachings and not just bill johnson's a lot of the people in the nar and like the likes of um madame blavatsky and alice bailey and the, the theosophic society which the theosophy is basically kabbalah in a nutshell well there's been some other quote-unquote discernment people who have disapproved and considered these these writings as um conspiracy theorists well 
Again, if you watched my, or listened rather to my Kabbalah, the Kabbalah heresy's main ingredient, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to put two and two together. And I don't understand why people like to play this whole conspiracy theory card when the proof is there. You know, granted, of course, if Chris Volatin is not going to come out and say, hey, I'm talking about Adam Kadmon. Of course, Bill Johnson is not going to come out and say, hey, I'm teaching a very similar God to Alice Bailey. Of course not. They're, they're throwing Christian terminology on this. You know, so if anybody's going to listen to my videos and think that I'm a conspiracy theorist, you know, you can think whatever you want. I'm just putting the links together. You know, it's the same lowercase g that these people worship. It's a Kabbalistic God. Surely it's painted different, a little bit differently here and there, but it's the same thing. So I really want to point that out because what I'm going to read here or show rather of Volatin, and I'm going to say this real quick as well. I have on the picture on the screen where I have the audio from Volatin's um, snippet of his little teaching Granted, they're not large clips because he the, the the teaching the context of his teaching is about marriage so he goes off topic so it, you know if you don't believe me that he's saying this in the context he's saying it then by all means go on the Bethel church or the I Bethel radio whatever it is and buy the buy the teaching for yourself and you can see I'm not taking anything out of context you can go and listen it listen to it yourself however for copyright reasons I'm not able to upload the whole teaching I have to, to um, keep with copyright um, guidelines. I have to only use little little snippets of it. But the context as far as him teaching, quote unquote, Adam is a hermaphrodite, he says it plain as day. Um, so, again, you can consider me or call me a conspiracy theorist. But the, you know, especially with the fact that there are another clip that he plays or that I play of his is um, that Adam was prophesying because, you know, in these churches, they teach that pow there's power in words and you can create words. And again, if you listen to the Kabbalah heresies main ingredient video, I did Kabbalists believe in the power of words you can create. Remember, they can create these golem things. So in the other um video clip that I'm going to play, Volatin is saying basically that Adam is was creating because he was naming the animals. So he was a co-creator with God. But yet he he starts that at first. But then he says, well, you know, Adam was just prophesying again. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to be able to tell that he's really talking about Adam Kadamon. Now, is he is he purposely teaching this? I don't know. I really don't know. I have a strong, honestly, belief that a lot of these false teachers, they're deceived themselves. I, I, can, I have no backing to prove that. I mean, it's possible that they could be in the back office and being, oh, I'm going to deceive those stupid people. It's possible. But I believe that a lot of these people really believe what they're teaching. And it's a Kabbalistic type Adam that he's teaching in these clips. Now, I'm going to read, and this is a Kabbalistic um from a Kabbalistic site, and it's called um, Adam Adam, and she gives a lot of quotes from these various texts, and she's talking about the quote-unquote hermaphrodite Adam, and granted, she doesn't give, well, she, she doesn't give the translation of the Bible, but they like to take that whole um, Genesis 127 and try to use it of the fact that he was a hermaphrodite. And, you know, you can't scratch out the them, you know, it's just almost kind of like when, remember at the beginning when God, when, when um, it's actually the Trinity, if you think about it, when he says about the water and they saw, the, they, the, they saw and they, um, 
I don't have the scriptures in front of me. I'm not really good at Bible memorization. But when he's um, speaking things into existence and he says they a lot, you know, the Bible many times God speaks in future tense and he speaks in present tense. And, you know, so when he says them, you can't, he's not to say, to read Genesis 127 and attribute it to Adam being a hermaphrodite. I mean, come on, you know, um, she, this person, Lania Urania Stewart, quotes it, again, she doesn't use a translation, and she says, and said, the Godhead, let us make Adam in our image as like to us, and he will rule with fish of the sea, and with birds of the heaven, and with beasts of all the earth, and all the reptile creeping upon the earth, and create the Godhead, the Adam, in an image of him, in an image of the Godhead, created him male and female he created them then she goes on to say within the briatic framework adam is made male and female as a single entity in the expression of divine plurality and unity it's the same relationship is evident in the usage of elohim translated here as godhead in certain aspects one finds unity in the verbs throughout genesis one are written in the singular in other words one finds plural in the use of pronouns and sometimes translated in other places in the bible as gods now going down here the briotic Adam as likeness or Adam Kadmon is represented in Kabbalah as embodying the entirety of the its Chayim or tree of life as a macro prospoic man and as a hermaphrodite being even as the godhead is expressed as male and female together the Adam Kadmon is not the same as yet satiric Adam thought the later is initially hermaphrodite as well um, Rabbi Simeon, one of the sages of the Zohar, stated, Adam and Eve, as we have said, were created side by side. Why not face to face? For the reason that heaven and earth were not yet in complete harmony, the Lord God had not caused it to reign upon the earth. Genesis 2, 5. When the lower union was rendered perfect and Adam and Eve turned face to face, then it was the upper union perfected. In other words, Adam and Chava, or male and female, Adam as Eve was not so called till after the fall, were joined side by side, and the later separation came by taking from the side Adam, hence the rib. Then when the male and female joined together in intercourse, the higher Adam Kadamam likewise perfected his union. Rabbi Simeon said, even further, it behooves a man to be male and female always so that his faith can remain stable and in order that presence may never leave him. It's a relationship affirmed as much throughout meditation upon Shekinah and the Shekinah manifest between him and his wife when they are in union. Remember, if you listen to the Kabbalah heresy's main ingredient, Kabbalists believe in that when they have sex, that they can awaken, and I even hate to even word this, but I'll say it because that's what they believe, that they can awaken their gods penis, which is the Yisad. That's the representation of it. Um, for those of us who are gender variant, either as androgynism, in which both male and female enemies, and anatomy, sorry, are physically represented, to, to men in which male and female cannot be determined, or as a transgender, seracism and I know it, such as transsexuals, the implications carry special significance for such who have interest in the covenant expressed both attributes in their being continually. They realize their own special consecration upon recognizing by Isaiah. And then she, I can't read Hebrew, but she's quotes some, some Hebrew texts. But I'm going to go, I'm going to click out of here. And again, this is from... Let me read the site first because I want to give um, footnotes. The, sorry, my computer is kind of acting up. Um, it's on WordPress. The Hieron, H-I-E-R-O-N is the site. And it's obviously not a, um, not a Christian site. Now let's go into what the Adam Candom is. Okay, and now this site is called seekgod.ca, and she's giving, or he, whoever's, I think it's a woman who writes it primarily on that site. 
The Adam Katamon referred to by Avi bin Martichai is a Kabbalistic teaching of the pre-medorial man. The Encyclopedia of Hadism re- defines pre-medorial man as physical Adam made in the image of the spiritual Adam, a concept which expresses the occult philosophy as above, so below. Predorial man, the early mystics referred from Genesis 126, 126, let us make man in our image, that the physical Adam was created in the pattern of a spiritual Adam that existed in the celestial world. Also Ezekiel 126, the likeness is the appearance of man. This became part of the later mystical view of the cosmos in which everything on earth had its counterpart of the realm of the Godhead. On the Kabbalah and its symbolism by Jershom Sholem identifies the god of the Sephiroth as Adam Kadmon, the first man. Referring to the Sephiroth, he explains the involved symbolism which leads to the delusion that God is man and man is incipitant God. But nowhere I believe is the mystical content more evident than in the symbolism which identifies this god of the Sephiroth, which man in his purest form, Adam Kadmon, pre-dormial man. Here, the God who can be apprehended by man is himself the first man. The great name of God in his creative unfolding is Adam. The Kabbalists declare to the strength of a gematria or numerical equation. The Bihar had spoken of the seven holy forms of God, each corresponding to a part of the human body. From here is only a step short of Adam Kadamon, a conception from which the anthropomorphic and mystical view of God never ceased to draw new justification. The esoteric thinking of the Zohar is wholly concern, concerned with the premedorial world of man as create as creature as creature, sorry, and as the increate Adam Kadamon. For this secret world of the Godhead manifested in the symbol of man is both at once is the world of the inner man, but also the realm which opens up to only the contemplation of the believer in which the Zohar terms the secret of faith, Raza de Mahamuthra. And Razael gave the Kabbalah. Adam Kadamon is also referred as lights emanating from the ears, mouth, and nose of the pre man or God. In the pl- pl- Pleroma arise the archetypes of all being, the forms determined by the structure of the Sephiroth of Adam Kadamon, of the creator God who takes a hand in creation. From the ears, the mouth, and the nose of the pre man bursts forth lights, which produce deeply hidden configuration states of being and inner worlds beyond the penetration of the human mind, even in the meditation. But the central plan of creation originates in the lights which shine in strange refraction from the eyes of Adam Kadamon, from the vessels which themselves consisting of lower mixtures of light were designed to receive this mighty light of the Sephiroth from his eyes and so to serve as vessels and instruments of creation. Adam Kadamon is also described as having five faces in five figures or configurations which Luria calls part Sufin, faces of God, or of Adam Kadmon, primordial man, is reconstructed in the world of Tikkum. These five faces are Arketh, long-suffering, the father of the mother of Zihar, Inpin, impatient, and his femin- feminine con- contemplate, the Shekinah. For the reading, feminine and masculine God. Kabbalists teach that God is masculine and feminine, and that when speaking of man, they are always referred to two faces. Adam Kadamon is androgynous, according to the Kabbalah interpretation of Genesis. Male and female created he them, as cited in Blavatsky Theosophical Glossary or in the Secret Doctrine. Here's a, here's a quote from that. Adam, as the supposed great progenitor of the human race, is, as Adam Kadmon, made in the image of God. A priapic image, therefore, the Hebrew words Zakhar and Nekaba are literally translated linga, phallus, and yoni, notwithstanding their transliteration in the Bible as male and female. As said there, God creates man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. The androgyny, Adam Kadamon, now this Kabbalistic name is not that of a living man, nor even a 
of a human or divine being, but of the two sexes or organs of procreation called in Hebrew, Zakhar, Nebuka, these two being therefore the image under both which the Lord God appeared usually to his chosen people. That this is so is now undeniably proven by almost all the symbol symbolists and Hebrew scholars, as well as by the Kabbalah. Therefore, Adam is in the one sense, Jehovah. In the book, The Rod of an Almond Tree in God Master Plan, Peter Micah states that Adam was created as a whole being, which meant he contained a balance of male and female. God was created as a whole being, complete in form, containing a balance of male and female logic emotion. Okay, I'm going to go. It's kind of a long. I'll put, the, as a matter of fact, if you go to um, Seek God and type in. Um, the Embrace Hebrew Roots, um, Part 5, Kabbalah Initiation. But I'm going to go to the Talmud and Kabbalah, Adam the Bisexual. According to author Judy Heinberg, the Talmud, Midrash, and Zohar present Adam as a hermaphrodite or bisexual. The Zohar, the central work of Jewish mysticism, develops the theory that Adam originally compromised, comprised I'm sorry, both male and female elements. This is based on Talmudic and Mid Midrashic statements that Adam, who was the first man, had two full faces. Brachot 61 and Hiroth 81. Rabbi Samuel Del Nak Nakman said, When the Holy One, blessed be he, created the first man, he created him as a hermaphrodite. Rabbi Lev Lev Levi said the same thing. When a man was created, he was created into two body fronts, and he sawed him in two, so that two bodies resulted, one for the male and one for the female. Weinberg shows that Adam's bisexuality links to Lilith. The Zohar picks up on this theme of Adam's bisexuality, but now draws a connection with Lilith. The female was attached to the side of the male until God cast him into a deep slumber. God then sawed her off from him and adorned her with a bride and bought her to him as it is written. He and he took one of his sides and closed up this place with flesh. I have found it stated in an old book that the word one here means one woman to with the original Lilith who was with him and conceived from him. Up to that time, however, she was not a help to him as it is written for Adam there was not found a help me, help me for him. Oh, I went up way too much. Hang on. Sorry, I'm on another computer. Here we go. Other references in the Zohar describe Lilith as a competitor to the female affixed to his side. When we look to Genesis, we see no reference to this occult teaching. A review of what is being taught through Planned Parenthood in public health, mental health institutions, the education system, and many liberal churches would reveal the foundational New Age teachings of bisexuality and androgamy. Getting in touch with one's female or masculine side is the esoteric cliche found in psychology today which is a very good point, by the way. Um, controversies over giving credit to Lilith versus other demons seems to consume the intellect intellectual and spiritual capabilities of Jewish scholars. Now, I'm not going to read a lot of this. It's talking more about Lilith, but I think you get the idea of what they're, of what they're teaching here. Um, another thing that's really disturbing that I, want to, that I want to read in regards to their Adam is... Um, the bestiality part, the Talmudic bestiality, the Babylonian Talmud, the accepted and preferred version, further teaches that Adam committed bestiality. Yebanoth 63 states that Adam had sexual intercourse with all the animals in the Garden of Eden. That seems to imply that Adam stayed in the garden and was not expelled after the original sin or that he was busy committing these acts before the record of events in Genesis involving the sin that caused both he and Eve to be expelled. According... To one source who summarizes the quotes, the Talmud further promotes such uncleanliness through obscene teachings regarding bestiality and sex with children. Yebamoth 59, remember these are Talmudic scriptures, so if you want to find them, you probably have to look at them for the Talmud. Yeboth 59, a woman who had intercourse with a beast is eligible to marry a Jewish priest. A woman who, ha who has had sex with a demon is also eligible to marry a Jewish priest. 
Sanhedrin, a Jew may marry a three-year-old girl, specifically three years and a day old. Sanhedrin 54, a Jew may have sex with a child as long as the child is less than nine years old. Kithubath, when a grown-up man has intercourse with a little girl, it is nothing. Brian Johnson's got lower Another thing I want to read, too, it gives a... It gives some reference. I don't know if you can find the book. I've not actually looked for the book, but it says um, the mystical body of Christ refers to Adam Catamon. Evidence can be found in the belief of Nassin. That's N-A-A-S-S-E-N-E. Nazar Nazarene essences proto-Christianity is what Hippolyptus mentioned in the refusion of all heresies. And there's a quote. For there is, says the Nassine, one blessed nature of the blessed man of whom is above, namely Adam, which is hermaphrodite. And then here's another reference, too, where it says that the concept of Adam Kadmon appears also in the Gospel of Judas, um, which is a Gnostic, a Gnostic, a Gnostic, um, a Gnostic book. It's not at all biblical. So I throw all this out here to you guys just food for thought type stuff i'm not standing and saying hey thus saith the lord but it's just too coincidental you know especially in another clip i'm going to show and i'll get into that after i show these clips of volatin stating these about the hermaphrodite adam and how adam was co-creating with god about the sins of god and how they take it out of context but here's the clips I'll, I'll get to that in a minute, but here's the clips of Volatin. And remember, I must repeat myself, these are short clips, and I only use them because he goes on to the whole marriage thing, and the whole marriage, I mean, he, he makes the point, and then he goes on. So if you want to find the whole teaching, it's there on the screen. There's a link there, or not necessarily a link, but I show a screenshot of where I found this teaching at. The Manifest Sons of God, burn down ready. Okay, let's go on. Let's go on. <laughs> God created man in his own image, and he created a male and a female. He created them. Now, uh, my, my point here is that God took uh, Adam, man, and he made him both male and female, and he told them to procreate, to be fruitful and multiply. Now, the reason why that's interesting is because when we get to chapter 2, God makes the statement that it's not good for man to be alone, and it's easy for us to think that there was no, that, that Adam was all alone in the sense that he had no female, that he had no way to procreate. But right from the very beginning, when God created Adam, you'll notice from the inception of the idea of man, he was able to reproduce himself. And I want to tell you, and I, here's where I'm going. There's a difference between Genesis 1, God created man, male, and female, and God created woman and man. I'm going to propose to you that woman isn't just a female. When he formed Adam and when he's formed woman. And this is interesting because when God speaks, worlds are created. God's words, they become worlds. Are you getting what I'm saying? If God would have spoke the animals into existence, in other words, if he would have said lion, and lion would have been formed, tiger and tiger would have been formed, Adam could not have named the animals. Because Adam was co-creating with God. They were called creatures before Adam named them. Then they were called animals with great distinctions as Adam gave the names to the animals. He didn't call them Spot, Fifi, and Trigger. When he named the animals, he gave the animals the distinct DNA. In other words, God was forming and Adam was prophesying and they were co-creating. God was, okay. And it says there was no suitable helper for him. Now, as you can see on the screen, this snapshot is taken from a Kabbalistic, quote unquote, Masonic slash Kabbalistic slash Christian blog site. And it's very deceptive. I'm actually really hesitant to even give the link to it, um, although I think it's important to give um, attribution. So it's um, Masonic. Kabbalah blog spot. Uh, so, but I, I caution anybody who wants to go to that site to be very careful. It's very, very deceptive, and they do name the name of Jesus, and I say lowercase J. Um, it's another Christ because they're saying that Kabbalah 
their Jesus is very, um, has to do with their Kabbalah. And um, so if you're going to look at it in regards to my footnote, um, I just caution you guys, please, please, please be very careful if you go to the site. Um, what I want to read, I want to read a few passages from, from some Kabbalists before I go into the next and final clip of Chris Valentin. And um, basically in the clip of Valentin, he's basically taking out of context the sons of God, which yes, the Bible does teach that through adoption, we are sons of God. But they take it to an extreme that, well, since gods are, quote unquote, as they call him, daddy or quote unquote, papa, all their little pet names they call the father, um, that since he's our father, then we should be like him. And they take out of context to be imitators of Christ instead of focusing on the suffering of Christ and dying with Christ like we're called to do, you know, to be crucified with Christ, um, the character of Christ. They 99% focus on just being imitators of the supernatural, you know, um, I find it ironic that he makes that Valentin makes a comment in there that, you know, you would uh, that you would be um, arrogant and prideful. It's like, well, they are arrogant and prideful. You know, it's it's pretty obvious with the demeanor of when you see Bill Johnson preaching. There's a, a sermon called, I think, um, Kingdom of God or. It's in my Our Works the Same as Fruit video. I can't remember the name of the teaching. It's towards the end where I show the two clips of Johnson. And he, he makes a point and he comes off of the stage and looks at the podium where he's standing and basically says, oh, that's a pretty good point. Anybody who can read between the lines, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see the lack of humility in that. If you make a good point, then you make a good point, but you don't glory in it and come off the stage and expect some kind of applause because you made a good point. Um, But they take these scriptures out of context to use it to show their their version of sons of god is the fact that well they can do all the things that jesus did another thing that they take out of context is daniel he's primarily reading the book of daniel and if you really grasp again i'll reference the video i did on where i was reading the college outline overview of what kabbalah is the kabbalah heresy's main ingredient they're trying to the goal of kabbalah is for them to restore the earth back to paradise well if you have that mindset whether you're following following kabbalah or not if you just have that dominion mindset and you think that we're supposed to do it now then of course why would there be judgment why would there be a coming of god's wrath any kind of biblical prophecy that is prophesied in the word of god is pretty much diminished um even like some of the um oh gosh um the um replacement theology um they they believe that all that judgment took place in um 70 AD um, under Nero. They don't believe all that pertains to here. The book of Revelation, they believe all that passed, you know. Of course, they take it in another different um, different take because some of them, not all, but a lot of them believe that they have, re- that the church replaces the Jews, that God is done with the Jews, and basically the Christians are the new Jews, you know. Um, it, it's There's a ton of different avenues where that can get twisted, but my point being is that basically he's teaching and it goes along with that thought bear in mind the Kabbalistic mindset is dominionism that's really where dominionism stems from the heresy is from Kabbalah he's teaching from the book of Daniel chapter 7 that it already passed and he's quoting about the dominion and how we're supposed to take dominion and he's talking about like it's right now Um, Again, as you heard before, he's uh, the clips I played prior to this about his um, Kabbalistic Adam that he refers to. 
Um, it does, again, it, if you read between the lines, guys, he's teaching Kabbalistic doctrine. And I'll repeat myself. I'm not saying that he necessarily is aware that he's teaching Kabbalistic doctrine. Again, that's where the, the people that start pointing the fingers, oh, well, you're just a conspiracy theorist. I'm not getting on a platform and saying, thus saith the Lord, but it mirrors Kabbalistic mindset. That's where the heresy stems from. Um, I'm going to read a couple um, passages before I play the video. Um, the first passage being from this heretical site that I just referenced that I gave a strong caveat on. And it's um, the title of it is True Gospel Restored. And, they're ta and the picture, as you can see, the children of God will restore the universe. It's teaching that doctrine of what he is teaching. Although they are, he's, this author is pertaining it to Kabbalah. And he is talking, I'm not going to read the whole thing. But he takes, he or she, whoever takes scripture greatly out of context. They throw these scriptures in and out, but they're completely taken out of context. But one of the things it says in here, the great supernal importance of Messianic Kabbalah wisdom is the redemption of mankind, the angels, and the whole universe. Herein comes the need and importance of God's Messianic Kabbalah wisdom because it is the because it is only through the wisdom of Messianic Kabbalah that we can reach such a lofty goal to the full stature of the Lord Jesus Christ. And again, they throw another scripture out of context. Um, it is only through Messianic Kabbalah that each of us can be molded into the very image and likeness of our God the Father and His Christ. That's a weird statement. Um, let me scroll down. Like I said, I'm just skimming through this because it's so antichrist and it's just got so much scripture taken out of context. I don't even really remember um, another thing they throw to um, of the world. Must all of our activities here on earth must be focused and directed to reach the stars, not only the moon. This is because all these heavenly bodies in the universe are eagerly waiting for us to succeed in our full spiritual development and transformation. And then they wrongly attribute Romans eight nineteen, And then they go on to say after that day of the manifestation of the sons of glory, God will then renew or create the new heavens and the new earth. That's a great white And then right in here there's another maybe it's in this one i've got so many windows open i apologize you have to get that um, out of yes heaven. right here is where that's another entry it says true gospel restored where are we now in the bible and it says that basically we're already there um, let me scroll down here it's the same it's teaching the same same thing as what Chris Volatin is, except these people are, I guess you could say being honest, if you will, although I wouldn't necessarily say it's honest because they're still deceiving people, they're but they're, they're rightly, I guess, attributing the Kabbalah, although I don't even know if they realize what the Kabbalah teaches because Jesus, there's no Jesus, at least the blessed only true Lord Jesus anywhere in the Kabbalah doctrine. I mean, it's a, it's a, gross uh, belief system um kabbalah's foundation of all it has nothing it mirrors nothing of biblical christianity but it says um let me find every it tracing here board is a freemason i was ill prepared so i apologize so every tracing board this. is a kabbalah lesson but it says here we go kabbalah. let me scroll up a little bit we are now in Bible prophecy. Let's go a bit deep in our study and some arithmetic calculations using God's formulas and equations to determine the exact time period we are now in. And they give all this scripture and it's completely taken out of context. And it says down here, we are now in the exciting Friday afternoon of the sixth millennium, just before the millennial, millennial Sabbath. We are now living in the sixth millennium, which is equivalent to the sixth day of the week, which is Friday in the cosmic sense. The middle day or 12 p.m. of the sixth millennium is the Hebrew year 5,500. Adding to 250 years to 5,500, we get the year 5,750, which means we are now living in the 
the Friday afternoon in the Super Null Millennial Week. Thus, the year 5750 started the Millennial Sabbath when the sun started to set or go down. In other words, the light of the Millennial Sabbath started shining in the year 500, 5000, I'm sorry, 750. See, and then they, they go on to say that it's now to it's now the time to wake up from sleep. Both the Bible and the Zohar prophesied that the time of the Messiah, the Messianic era, God will reveal the deep mysteries of the Bible, the Messianic Kabbalah wisdom, and everyone will know God from the least of them to the greatest. The powerful job of revealing the Messianic Kabbalah will be done by the spirit and power of Elijah, as written in Malachi 4, 5 through 6 and Luke 1, 16 through 17. The Messianic Kabbalah wisdom is also called the Messianic light, and the Bible commands each of us to put on his armor of light i don't know if i should really if there's really a need to go on again if you feel the need to go to this um very heretical site the messianic kabbalah revolution it's almost verbatim identical to what volatin is teaching and this person's profile is the bride of christ is the assembly of jews and christians who have reached such a high level of righteousness spiritually an intimate relationship with god the father and his and his Christ, the bridegroom. Christ I just, you know, his Christ. Um, let me see, another. They've got like three websites here. But um, I'm not going to go to them. And I think they're, it looks like they're from the Philippines. These, these people that are, or this person rather, that is teaching this. But I'm going to go to another real quick. I'm going to digress to um, Rabbi Michael Berg. And Rabbi Michael Berg is one of the fairly newer Kabbalistic, quote unquote, theologians, whatever you want to call them, that, you know, give their take on what the Kabbalah means and stuff. And to my knowledge, he is the one that has kind of catered to the stars there in Hollywood and turned them on to the Kabbalah. I, think, I believe he died fairly recently, but... He has a, an audiobook called Becoming Like God, Kabbalah and Our Ultimate Destiny. It's an audio CD. I'm reading just, I mean, the excerpt of this CD on Amazon is pretty much, it speaks for itself, but I'll read it. It says, in his continuing work to demystify and teach the ancient esoteric texts of Kabbalah, Michael Berg suggests that the time is right for people to break free of ego nature and achieve total joy and Im immortality. In other words, to become like God, advising ruthless honesty about the human life, its pain, suffering, and death, and then providing an escape plan based on those truths. Berg uses the tools of Kabbalah, such as, such as the Zohar, the key text of the discipline, as well as the collective energy of all the individuals sharing this path to help form that critical mass that will allow everyone to realize their true joyous nature becoming like god gives readers the methodology to be applied at every moment to destroy ego begin transformative sharing and create a path to realize their true godlike nature here's another cabalistic site this is about as close as you can get to Kabbalah without saying the word Kabbalah or Zohar. Each of us has a spark of godliness inside us. The great Kabbalist says the Zohar, like Rabbi Simeon, Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Joshua, are all considered to be the son of God, the son of the Holy One, blessed be he, when they unleash the godliness inside them through the teaching of Zohar's teachings. The Kabbalists teach that we are a part of God himself. Like a stone that has been cut away from a mountain, the stone is the same substance as the mountain. The only reason it's called a stone and not a mountain is because it's been separated from the mountain and it is only a small aspect of the mountain, but in essence, they are one. I could go on and on, but I really, you know, I hope and pray that you guys can put the pieces together. Again, I'm not coming at any, I hope that I'm not coming across this way, rather, that I'm an expert and I'm just this, I just know all there is to know about Kabbalah. I'm just giving you guys food for thought. So ponder all that I've read here and listen, it's about a 25 minute clip of Chris Valentin. And he says basically the whole, you know, what I just mentioned, Daniel one's already passed. We're in the new millennium. He talks about the sons of God. He, they, he says it plain as day that we're gods. Of course, he tries to um, polish it over and says, um, well, I mean, lowercase G it doesn't matter. 
Um, it's, it's all laid out there. All you guys got to do is read between the lines. That's, that's really all you guys got to do. Because he's not reading scripture. Daniel 7. I love this book. I kept looking because the sound of the boastful words which the horn was speaking, I kept looking until the beast was slain and the body was destroyed and given to the burning fire. Come on. Okay, now listen to this. Verse 12. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away. Now this is very important that you get this part. Their dominion, everybody say their dominion was taken away, but... An extension of life was granted to them for an appointed period of time. Okay, so their dominion's taken away. So they don't have dominion, but their life is extended. Did you get that part? Okay, now, verse 13. I kept looking, this is a key. I kept looking in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like the Son of Man was coming. Everybody say, Son of Man. And he came to the ancient of days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion. Everybody say dominion. Dominion. Glory. Everybody say glory. Glory. And a kingdom. Everybody say kingdom. Kingdom. That all peoples, nations, and men in every language might serve him. That's ain't your meaning. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which will not pass away. And his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. That's what Chris is teaching. Okay, you got that? The teaching of ain't your meaning. So, here's the question. When... When does this happen? To him was given dominion, glory, and a kingdom. Seven mountain mandates. That all peoples and nations and men of every language might serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which will not pass away. And his kingdom is one, which will not be destroyed. The question is, when? Scripture says okay, so let me read on. Verse 18. But the saints of the highest one is will receive a kingdom, the possess the kingdom mountain forever mountain for all mountain. ages to come. Verse 21, I kept looking until the horn was waging war with the saints and overpowering them. Everybody say, boo. Verse 22, until. Until. Okay, this is a very important verse. This is a very important word, until. Okay, this this word until is like the cross of Jesus Christ. Like, Before the cross, I was a sinner. After the cross, I was a saint. (laughs) I mean, this word until is the Jordan River. Before the Jordan River, I was in the wilderness. After the Jordan River, I was in the promised land. Are you with me? Listen to this. Until the ancient of days came and judgment was passed in favor of the saints of the highest one, and the time arrived for the saints to take possession of the kingdom. Okay, listen. On this side of the until... The saints are overpowered by the horn. On this side of the until, it says that the time arrived for the saints to take possession of the kingdom. That's a big until. Because on this side, the horn is waging war with the saints and overpowering them. And on this side, dominion, glory, and a kingdom that lasts forever is given to the saints of the highest one. So the question is, when? When is the question? Okay, listen. It goes on. Verse 25. He will speak out, speaking of the devil, against the Most High, and wear down the saints of the highest one. But, that's a big but. Chris is teaching the devil's doctrine. But, the court will sit for judgment. His dominion will be taken away and annihilated and destroyed forever. Notice that it doesn't say that he will be destroyed. Remember, we already read back in verse 12. It says, for the rest of the beast, their dominion was taken away, but extension of life was given to them. In other words, God said, listen, you have no more power, but you have to live on the same planet as the people you tormented. There are no planets. It's like taking a police officer and putting him amongst the criminals he arrested. The Lord said, listen, before I throw you into the lake of fire, here's going to be your first punishment. I'm going to put you in the middle of the people you tormented, and I'm going to take away your power. That's what about to come down, guys. Because now I can fulfill the word where I said, you'll bruise his heel, but he'll crush your head. And these guys are teaching the so listen to this. doctrine. Then the sovereignty, the dominion, 
and the greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be given to the people of the saints of the highest one. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom and all dominions will serve and obey him. Okay, the question is, when? Why is he doing when? hand sign? How do we know when this is supposed to happen? Okay, we know that the Ancient of Days has to come and he has to pass judgment in favor of the saints. Got it? She and what's the second clue? And the time arrived for the saints to take possession of the kingdom. Okay? As soon as that happens, we know that sovereignty, dominion, and the greatness of all the kingdoms of the whole heaven will be given to the saints of the highest one. Got me? Yeshua is coming okay, back. Okay, so let's read a few verses then. You Just can write them down. Can. Matthew 24, 14. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached on the, in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Mark 12, 34. Then Jesus saw that he'd answered intelligently. He said to them, you are not far from the kingdom of God. You are not far from the what? Kingdom of God. Luke 4, verse 43, it says, but he, speaking of Jesus, said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for I had sent for this purpose. The Luke 9, 2, proclaim the kingdom of God and to perform healing. Luke chapter 10 verse 9, the kingdom of God has come near you. Luke chapter 12 verse 31, but seek first his kingdom and all these things shall be added to you. Verse 32, do not be afraid little flock for your father has chosen gladly to give you the kingdom. John chapter 3 verse 3, Jesus answered and said, truly truly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John chapter 3 verse 5, lest one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 1 and verse 9, to these he presented himself alive after suffering by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 8 verse 12, but when they had believed Philip preaching the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ they were baptized both men and women alike Acts 19.8 he entered the synagogue continuing to speak to them boldly for three months reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of God Acts 20 verse 25 now behold I know that among you I went out preaching the kingdom of God and you will no longer see my face Colossians 1.13 he rescued us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us currently transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son uh, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28 since we have received a kingdom which cannot be shaken let us show gratitude by which we may offer God an acceptable sacrifice with reverence <laughs> Daniel chapter 7 the horn was waging war against the saints and overpowering them until the ancient of days came and judgment was passed in favor of what? The saints of the highest one and the time arrived for the saints to take possession of the kingdom. When did the ancient of days take a seat and pass judgment in favor of the saints of the highest one? I can tell you when. It says in Colossians that when Jesus died on the cross, he publicly displayed the devil. He defeated him on the cross. He publicly displayed him as powerless. And the decrees that were made against us were canceled. That's why it says in Daniel chapter 7 that the ancient of days took his seat and judgment was passed. Decrees were made in favor of the saints of the highest one. And then the time arrived for the saints to take possession in the kingdom. When you were born again, you were born into a kingdom. Freemasons and then you were told to preach the kingdom wherever you go. And it was the father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. 127 times preach the kingdom. Just heal the sick, raise the dead, say the kingdoms come near you. A dot within a circle is a Freemason sign for Satan. I it's would like to suggest logo. that Daniel stuff. 7 is not in the millennium. But the kingdom has already come. I'm not saying there's not a second coming. I'm saying the kingdom has come. And you've been transferred from the kingdom of darkness, and you are currently living in the kingdom of his beloved son, and you are seated in heavenly places with Christ, and he's already put everything under your feet. 
That is a past tense. He's given you every blessing in heavenly places in Christ. It's already happened. What's the logo on the back of your shirt? And so the ramifications of that is this. Then the sovereignty, the dominion, and the greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole heaven will given to, be given to the people, the saints of the highest one. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion will serve and obey him. Okay, turn to Romans 8, verse 14. If you're led by the Spirit of God, you are sons of God. You've not received the spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you've received the, the spirit of adoption as sons, which, which we cry, Abba, Daddy, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And if we are children, listen, if we are children of God, you got to get this. If we are children of God, of God. Listen, don't pass it by like something you've read a million times. If you're a child of the person who's God, we have a video that proves Chris is this. Then you are heirs. Heirs also. Heirs of God. Fellow heirs with Christ. And if deeds you suffered with him, so that you may be also glorified with him. For the anxious longing of creation waits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. For creation itself was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because him who subjected it in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that all of creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. What's he saying? You know what he's saying? He's saying that the devil knows who you are. And he knows and God you knows who you are. For him. Creation knows who you are. It's only you who don't know who the heck you are. Scripture doesn't say that. And all of creation is groaning. See, when Adam and Eve sinned, it wasn't just humans that were cursed. It was creation. Remember, he said to Adam, you will till the ground. You're going to work hard, but you know what it's going to do? It's going to yield thorns and thistles. That's why Jesus said, preach this gospel to all creation. The gospel's not just for people. It's for creation. Isn't that interesting? What is creation groaning for? for It's groaning for the sons of God to be revealed. Why? Because Adam subjected creation to fertility. What does that mean? It means that it became purposeless. You know, in the book of Ecclesiastes where it says, it's all vanity? Yes, you are. Same word. It means it's all for nothing. But remember Romans 1 said God's invisible attributes, his eternal power, his divine nature are clearly seen in what God made. In other words, creation had a purpose to display the glory of God. But what happened when Adam fell? The earth itself was cursed. And what's it waiting for? It's saying, listen, you got released from the curse on the cross. And we're waiting for the sons of God to be revealed so that we can be released from the curse of slavery into the freedom of the children of God. How did the verse start out? Remember Romans said, we're no longer enslaved to fear, but now we're released to freedom because we're children of God, joint heirs of Christ. Creation goes, that's great for you, but we're still under a curse. Until you figure out who you are, we're under this curse. And we want to be a new creation too. That's why the gospel was to be preached to all creation. So that creation could be released from the curse and be released back in to his purpose, which was to give glory to God. They speak with their hands and they teach with their feet. When does creation get released from the curse? As soon as you figure out who you are. You are Freemasons. What's the point? You rock. You just don't know it. You were born to reign. What Genesis chapter 1. Be fruitful and multiply and take dominion. Daniel chapter 7. Dominion, glory, and a kingdom shall be given to the saints of the highest one. What is Daniel saying? I see a time when the original creation, the original call of creation was restored to the children of God. When's that supposed to happen? It already happened. Wasn't that in the millennium? Taking our town. No. 
That's not in the millennium. I'm sorry. It says, cult when this ancient of days took his seat, judgment was passed in favor of the saints of the highest one, and the time arrived for the saints to take possession of the kingdom. I'm sorry. That already happened. That already happened. That's... This is Bethel's androgynous god. This is the esoteric head of Freemasonry and the esoteric head of the New Age movement. When everybody sings about the age of Aquarius, they're speaking about the age of Saint Germain. That's the stuff, remember, that we just showed the video where Michael Flynn was praying the same prayer as Elizabeth Clare Prophet, and they were saying the prayer of Saint Germain. We have the video from just in the last few weeks, I believe, if you go and look. But this is Bethel's androgynous God. This is the guy in charge of Freemasonry. This is the very top guy. When all of your NAR leaders are talking about that they've gone on trips to heaven, you see those little clouds? Those clouds collect over the top of Mount Shasta. And when they're over the top of Mount Shasta, the Bethelites believe that's a portal. The Bethel leaders. Sorry, guys. I know there's lots of you inside the church that have been waking up to the understanding. And even, you know what, that term, that whole wake up thing is a Freemason buzzword. And I realized that I'm using it on the backup channel, but I used that because um, Chris Roseboro had used the wake up olive to be able to get his people like to get the olive situation going out. And so when he used the wake up olive, I was, I was thinking to myself, no, the whole town needs to wake up, not not the Bethelites need to wake up to the fact that they are calling up the dead and scripture says not to call up the dead. And so that was another intentional time where they were causing Bethelites to sin on purpose. Scripture says don't call up the dead and they were intentionally chanting, Olive, come out of that grave, come out of that grave, come out of that grave, Olive, come out of that grave, come out of they were calling up the dead. Scripture says, don't call up the dead. So when all of these, the Bethel leaders say that they've had trips to heaven, they've been hanging out with Mark Nies up in Mount Shasta, which is the esoteric head of Freemasonry. The New Age movement is based on Mount Shasta. Every bit of what's going on. This is the man of lawlessness that first must be revealed before Yeshua HaMashiach, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, returns, is this guy. And this guy is the one giving Bethel, the angel investment network, the money to steal the city of Reading, and they're telling their congregation that God is giving them our town. Their God is giving them our town by giving the Angel Investment Network money into Bethel, going and starting any business they want. Any of the Bethelites, as long as they have a good idea, they can be able to go to the Angel Investment Network and they will hand them as much money as they want for a good idea. But instantly, Bethel's going to get 10% of the tithing money and Bethel is just a Ponzi scheme that's taking money and hiding it that's why they can have Goat Lord Farms at Brian um, Johnson's house and Jen Johnson's house. Goat Lord is Baphomet worship. This guy is androgynous. This is the reason why the whole group is following him is because he is he fits the credentials of what is needed to be the one possessed. Remember, Satan disguises himself as a worker of light or an angel of light. These guys are the angel investment group from Mount Shasta, and they are also the great white brotherhood of light ascended masters. That's who these guys are. They're the top echelons of the fallen angels possessing human bodies that are willing to be possessed so that they can be able to speak the future they want take people with them to the lake of fire remember satan is waiting for the keys to the bottomless pit 
where would you think a bottomless pit is unless it's underneath Mount Shasta? We just have to use common sense, okay? So the Kabbalistic teachings say that the world is a globe and that the root chakra of that globe, the very foundation of that globe is the root chakra is based in Mount Shasta. You can go and look up that information, but then you can go and look at a Google satellite view of the southwest foot of Black Butte, which is eight miles away from Mount Shasta City, but it's still a volcanic chimney of Mount Shasta. It's just a pile of black volcanic rocks that came out of a hole and made a giant pile of rocks. But at the southwest foot of that mount of that pile of rocks is a giant zodiac. That zodiac on the ground, and I'm talking giant, like the size of a football field, across and high. It's a giant circle with 12 lines through it. Well, whatever it is. It makes 12 somethings. It makes 12 pizza slices. We'll say it that way. Okay, so that giant zodiac is where every one of those lines creates the ley lines that are on the flat earth and all of the Freemason temples are on the ley lines. This is the foundation of the Kabbalistic world. This is Mount Shasta in Sanskrit means divine law. These people are giving their ang fallen angel divine law at the mountain of divine law. Does that make sense? In Sanskrit, Shasta means divine law. So these guys are at the mountain of divine law. I'm not pushing Spencer Smith's videos because I think that he is one of the plants, one of the controlled opposition, but he talks about the divine feminine. This is Lucifer teaching the divine feminine in Michigan. I just pointed out a second ago that the dot within a circle is Freemasonry and it was right over the same left shoulder as Chris Valentin while he was making that speech. Same thing over the left shoulder of St. Germain. Remember this video from two years ago that says Hillsong Masonic symbolism is everywhere? That dot within a circle is inside this video too. It was inside the shirt design. You guys can pause that. Something I missed. They're using runic alphabet in this also. And that says I am, but the am is an F backwards because it's the I am a free and acceptable Mason. So they are the F and A M are the Masons. F, free, and 
acceptable masons. F and A M. person who's presenting this video is sitting in the front row and is agreeing with everything that Chris is saying. It's a girl. She's probably one of the leadership if she's in the front row and she's agreeing with everything Chris is saying. That means there's a whole group of these people who have the same understanding already and they're just agreeing with Chris and they're perpetuating this inside the group that God and Adam are hermaphrodites. Their God is a hermaphrodite. Mark Barnonius the, is the top of Freemasonry right now. That's their God. That is St. Germain. That's who they pray to. That's who they, their doctrine is, the doctrine of the Kabbalah. That's the doctrine of the fallen angels. The fallen angel investment group is the one giving the money to Bethel. We're supposed to be, here is wisdom. The seven heads on which the beast rides are also seven mountains. The seven mountain mandate and the beast system are the same thing. And the Bethelites are being told, go and conquer, and here's the seven places you need to go and conquer. Chris brought up in his teachings that Adam was put outside of the Garden of Eden and was told to take dominion over the earth. But now he's got a cushy, sit on your butt in an office, make up stories about God, and that's his idea of taking dominion over the earth. You know what? I And I'm not trying to brag. This is just something that I personally do. Once I came into the understanding of the Torah and that we're to keep the spirit of the law, not the letter of the law, this year I've easily given away a thousand food-bearing trees. And right now I have 500 fi food-bearing trees in my front yard. I have 99 mulberries inside my front yard, 99 mulberry trees rooting that have little bitty roots, but they're all started, which means that in two to three years, those things will be fully mature. My orange trees, they're already producing fruit. This is the first year of my 12 peach trees that I have one fruit. I that we got a frost and it knocked all the flowers off except for one. So this is what I'm working with right now. But I'm outside watching scriptures talking about that God will give your increase. Once you start doing the Torah walk and understanding how the holy feast dates line up with the times of the year that the wheat come to maturity and how the prophecies that were in the Old Testament were fulfilled through Yeshua, and now we're waiting for the fall feasts to be able to be fulfilled through Yeshua. If Chris isn't teaching to the law and the testimony, there is no truth in him, according to Isaiah 8.20. To the law and the testimony, if a man comes speaking according to these words, there's no truth in him. This guy is not teaching according to the law. He's teaching according to the law of attraction that comes from inside Freemasonry and the New Age movement. He's teaching the laws of the divine fallen angels that are found inside the Kabbalah. That's what Bethel is teaching, is the laws of the divine fallen angels. 
And that's what this teaching comes from, that man and God, that Adam and God are hermaphrodites. Shekinah is another name for Lucifer, and Bethel Music has Corey Asbury getting millions of people to sing Shekinah Glory Come Down. And you guys are thinking he's coming down from, well, even I shouldn't have said he, because in their theology, the Shekinah is a female Holy Spirit. So when they're saying Shekinah come down, they're asking Mark Barnonius to come down out of that cloud that was up above Mount Shasta at the Mountain of Divine Law. said be imitators of god listen i can't heal the sick only god can heal the sick that's right you are sons of god in fact jesus quoted the psalmist when he said you are gods and the word is gods is little g ye is big g and you are little g you're little g god i understand we're not mormons don't take this too far I'm saying that before you were born again, you were created a little lower than the angels. But when you got born again, the angels serve you. Now you became heirs of salvation in which the angels serve. You didn't make you this. Listen, you didn't make you this. If you did, then you would be arrogant. All you're doing is receiving what daddy did for you. Daddy did this for you, and that's why you can say, if you don't believe me on account of my words, then believe me on account of my works, because greater works do you do when I go to be with the Father. What's the point? The reason why you do miracles is because your daddy is God. You can do the miracles is because your daddy is the God of you. Jesus never said, go out and pray for the sick. He said, go heal the sick. He said, go me. Only God can heal the sick. You are heirs to the throne. You're acting like God because you are children of God. Your daddy is in charge of the universe. The universe is Lucifer. Listen, if doctor. you teach people to heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out demons, and you don't teach them who they are, then they have a performance-based identity. But as soon as you figure out who you are, you're like, if that's who I am, where's my power? We live inside the cosmos. According to scripture, we live in the cosmos, not the universe. And it's a different Hebrew word. The reason why miracles didn't pass away with the apostles is because you are children of God. From the time that Jesus died on the cross to the time he returns for you, you will still be a child of God. And you only know how to act supernaturally because your daddy is the God of the universe. And when you know, act like God, you're being yourself. That's why Paul said in Ephesians 5, be imitators of God. Do the Torah. What are you doing? I'm acting like my daddy creation is waiting for you to get it the law of god it's under a curse because you don't know who you are you're a satanist well you know we don't want to build ourselves up too big they speak with their hands they just a sinner saved by grace i'm just you know i'm just lucky to get in that's what i am well, that's a really weird way to act when Jesus said in John 17, Father, the glory you gave me, I want you to give them. I mean, I believe in prayer, but I don't know if he answered that one. Do you think that Jesus said to the Father, the glory you gave me, I want you to give to them, John 17. And the Father said, I don't think so. Ain't going to do it. The only reason you have a bad thought in your head is because you have a devil who wanted to be what you became. 
He said, I will be like God. I will raise up into the assembly of the Most High, and I will be like God. And God said, no, you won't. You'll be thrust down. Where were you seated? In heavenly places. What did he want to be? I will sit in the assembly of the Most High. God goes, no, you won't sit in the assembly of nothing. You're going to the earth. He thrust him down to the earth. And then what did he do? He took away his power and let him live. (laughs) What? So that he can watch. This is part of his punishment was watching billions of people on the planet be made in the image of God. The very thing he wanted. He said, I will be like God. God goes, no, you won't. I will put you down on the planet. I will put you on this earth. And I will make billions of people like me. Planets are the ball. They will be made in my image and in my likeness. You will never forget me because they will step on your head time after time. And then when, I get, when they get done tormenting you for thousands of years, then I'll throw you in the lake of fire. You were born to torment the tormentor. The devil's after me, the devil's after me, the devil's after me. If you go to a psychologist and you ask them to give you the characteristics of a schizophrenic, they have to go to a book that's co- that is their manual called the DSM-5. D, like David, S, M, dash, 5. So if you go and put in the DSM-5, verifiable schizophrenic, it will give you a list of characteristics for a person who has schizophrenia. Not only does Chris have schizophrenia, Bob Jones has schizophrenia, um, Bill Johnson has schizophrenia, uh, Julie Winter. All these people are hearing the audible voice of God. Julie Winter, our mayor, is Chris Fallatin's doctor, and she's the one prescribing his medication for his schizophrenia. So in a way, our mayor, who was put in place by Chris Fallatin, predicting, telling Julie Winter, I see you being Redding's mayor. He does this out in public so that people see him do it, and then they already have a plan to put her into that position. Okay, let me give you guys an example. When I was at Bethel World Outreach Church in Nashville, that's the one that's Toby Max Church, the one that I just put up the post in the community post about DC Talk and all of their satanic symbolism, and I showed that same dot within a circle inside DC Talk's free at last album cover that same group of people toby has a group of of six brothers or seven brothers on his record label and the musical group is called the katinas now i became friends with the lead singer when we were at um gma week gospel music association week in mm, probably 1998, maybe 97, somewhere around there. So the lead singer from the Katinas and the boys all went to our church. So I was at music concerts the week before the Dove Awards. And all of Nashville, all of their small venues would be taken by all of the Christian artists, period, would all rush to Nashville for the week before the GMAs, and everybody would perform. If you were trying to become a signed Christian artist, you would have gone out, found yourself a little dive bar, put a sign out in the window, hired yourself two or three girls to hand out flyers as people walked by and you try and get people into your concert and you probably would have gone with flyers and demo CDs or singles and walked around town, handed those out hours or even days before the GMAs and invited people out. And then you can end up with 50 or 200 people showing up to your concert. And when the record labels 
have their executives go out like if auto price from word records that used to be the president of word records he's also known as the bass player sugar bear for dc talk if auto would have walked into one of the performances and saw that you had a crowd of 200 people he would have a whole lot more interest in being interested in signing you or knowing what you were singing about and what your story is than if you walked into the dive bar and there were 12 people and they might have accidentally walked in and they really just wanted to come in for a beer and you just happened to be singing or whatever is the situation so Back in the old days, this is what happened. So I met the Katinas, and then when we were at church, the pastor tells this story. What do you think would happen? This is Pastor um, Rice Brooks, Brook, Rice Brooks, that's at Bethel World Outreach Church, because they've changed it from Bethel World Outreach Center because of the bad press. So it... Bethel World Outreach Church, Bryce, or Pastor Rice was telling a story of if Michael Jordan walked up to the gates of the White House and told the Secret Service that he wanted to talk to the president, what do you think would happen? And then he goes, if you walked up to the white to the gates of the White House and said, um, I want to see the president. What do you think would happen? And he said, if Michael Jordan walked up, they know who he is. They would open the gates. They wouldn't even call inside. They would take him straight into the president and they would allow him to see the president because he is a known person. And so what do you think would happen if you walked up to the gates of the White House? Do you think they'd let you in? And he said, no, instantly they would end up sending the entire brigade over and they'd all jump on you and you'd end up in handcuffs and they don't know who you are. So you need to be known by the world. Well, a couple of years later, now the same group, the Katinas that was inside Bethel and is a signed group with Toby Mac. Now, a couple years later, they're singing at the White House. And so inside this group, Pastor Rice was just making an analogy, but in the congregants' heads, he was predicting that he was being a prophet. He was prophesying that if you wanted to become known, or if you became known, then you would be invited to the places where all the rest of the Luciferian people are at. So this is part of the whole you can't trust these guys. They're, Chris is a verifiable schizophrenic. Testing the NAR prophets. Bob Jones is another verifiable schizophrenic. And he was being, his handler was Mike Bickle. Did you guys see what happened after Bob passed away? Mike Bickle's whole situation crumbled because of his sex pedophile acts coming to the public. The same stuff, same group. They're all lifting up Count Zinzendorf's mustard seed Freemasonry sex cult that's, what, 300 years old now? That Rick Joyner owns the property of Moravian Falls. That's where Count Zinzendorf's sex cult is. That's where at least that branch, because all Freemasonry is a sex cult. The dot within a circle is the male and female coming together, the yana. These people, and I'm just quoting yana, not me saying it myself. I'm repeating what we just heard from Psalm 86 when she was reading about what Chris is teaching. The Spirit clearly says that in latter times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons, which is the Kabbalah. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. 
because Chris Valentin, the schizophrenic, has had a transorbital lobotomy. That's what the word hot iron is. They are searing his soul Uh, oh, this one says consciences. So the conscience is found inside the front. Uh, oh, I don't remember all my anatomy stuff to talk about the brain. Your conscience is in a place inside your brain where these guys stick a hot needle up inside of the, through the eyeball which is part of the Freemasons Black Eye Club. Whenever you see the, we'll call them the elite, when you see the upper echelons of the Masons, the ones that are out on the world stage, and they have black eyes, and somebody is specifically saying, oh, look at their black eyes, it's the Black Eye Club. Their consciences have been seared with a hot iron, they are the ones telling lies because they don't have a conscience that they're telling you lies. They're repeating the doctrines of the spirits and things taught by demons. And so they don't have a conscience about that. They don't care that they're leading you to the lake of fire. Chris doesn't care. He wants his brand new Corvette with the SQINST Square Institute license plate that says... We'll meet on the square. God, what are you doing? I'm acting like my daddy. <laughs> Creation is waiting for you to get it. It's under a curse because you don't know who you are. Curses if you break the law of Torah. Well, you know, we don't want to build ourselves up too big. Just a sinner saved by grace. I'm just, you know, I'm just lucky to get in. That's what I am. Well, that's a really weird way to act when Jesus said in John 17, Father, the glory you gave me, I want you to give them. I mean, I believe in prayer, but I don't know if he answered that one. Do you think that Jesus said to the Father, the glory you gave me, I want you to give to them, John 17. And the Father said, I don't think so. Ain't going to do it. The only reason you have a bad thought in your head is because you have a devil who wanted to be what you became. And because he said, I will be like God. I will raise up into the assembly of the Most High and I will be like God. And God said, no, you won't. You'll be thrust down. Where were you seated? In heavenly places. What did he want to be? I will sit in the assembly of the Most High. God goes, no, you won't sit in the assembly of nothing. You're going to the earth. He thrust him down to the earth. And then what did he do? He took away his power and let him live. <laughs> what? So that he could watch. This is part of his punishment was watching Billions of people on the planet be made in the image of God. The very thing he wanted. He said, I will be like God. God goes, no, you won't. I will put you down on the planet. I will put you on this earth. And I will make billions of people like me. They will be made in my image and in my likeness. You will never forget me because they will step on your head time after time. And then when I get when they get done tormenting you for thousands of years, then I'll throw you in the lake of fire. You were born to torment the tormentor. The devil's after me, the devil's after me, the devil's after me. Dude, no. You got it all screwed up in your brain. I don't know what to do. I'm under attack. Well, if you submit to God and resist the devil, I heard he runs. But the devil's like a dog. As long as you run, he'll chase you. He doesn't care if he's a little fifi dog and little fluffy duffies. If he yap, 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 and you run, he will run after you. Have you ever thought of what happened if you just stand like, what are you doing? <laughs> Man, you don't realize I have troubles in my life. Well, you can always tell the size of a man by the size of a problem it takes to discourage him. 
That was a big problem. Do you have a trouble or do you have a miracle in your life? It looks like a problem. Yes, it is. Well, listen, every miracle was a problem at one time, so it became a miracle. Until Bethel gets taken out of the way. You got to have a mess before you can have a message and a test before a testimony. Listen to this. I'm almost done. Psalm 16.3. As for the saints who are on the earth, they are the majestic ones, and in whom is all my delight. <laughs> You're not nameless or faces. You have a name and a face. Isaiah 55.5. Behold, you will call a nation you do not know, and a nation which knows you not will run to you. Because of the Lord your God, even the Holy One of Israel, he has glorified you. That's a good word. You rock. And you didn't even do it to you. Why don't you just try this? It'll be painful at first. Just say this. I am amazing. I am God's greatest creation. He loves me to death. I rock. I was born to do greater works than Jesus. I was born for glory. Nations are attracted to me because I'm so good looking. And I have the mind of Christ. Therefore, I think like God. He's my inheritance. I'm his inheritance. And he actually likes me. And I like me too. And if you got to know me, you would like me. Creation knows who I am. The devil knows who I am. God knows who I am. The angels, they know who I am. And today, I know who I am. I apologize for the very new age picture that I have on the screen there, but I put it there really to show that basically that is where all of this is leading. You know, um, I would even go so far as that tree right there represents um, maybe the tree alive or maybe that uh, that um, Sephiroth type thing. I don't know, even though it's drawn different, but they talk about the tree of life in Kabbalah. I'm not saying this is a Kabbalistic picture, by the way. I'm just saying yes, the this New Age picture shows it's exalting man. It's, it, it's clear it's giving man all this power with all these elements and stuff it's holding in his hand. But... Yep. Digressing away from the photo, I hope that you guys can at least, even though I know that I'm not the greatest at, at in my speech and articulating everything, and I probably get a little bit in, too enthusiastic with what I say and my tone of voice, but I, I just, my motive is that you guys can put the pieces together. I said this in my last video, the Kabbalah heresy's main ingredient, that I am in no way minimizing the lie in the Garden of Eden. You know, I've heard some people that are, you know, don't really want to put the Kabbalah pieces together and they say, well, it just all comes from Satan. That That's a given. It goes without saying. The Gnosticism goes without saying. The Hindu elements go without saying. This is This is my best analogy I can give about Kabbalah. You know, Walmart, you guys, I'm sure all you guys that are listening have been to Walmart. Walmart has everything. They've got a photo center there. They've got um, the deli there. They sell groceries there. They also sell cosmetics there. They also sell, sell um, auto, auto stuff for your automobile. They sell electronics there. Um, some of them even have a tax place where you can have a tax thing, even though it's that may not necessarily be affiliated with Walmart, but it's still there at Walmart. They sell um, plants. They sell everything there at Walmart. Um, stuff for sewing. I mean, you name it, they sell it. DVDs, phones now, they sell iPhones. I mean, of course, that would fall under electronics. But my point is they got everything there at Walmart. 
You know, there's some people that never even go to the mall. They just go to Walmart because they have clothes and underwear and socks and shoes. And that's kind of like what Kabbalah is. It's got everything there. You know, I don't, I talked to a lady. So this is just coming from one perspective. I don't know the rest of you guys, if you guys heard the last, the outline, the college outline I read of Kabbalah. But, you know, this lady heard it. And she was like, she picked up all kinds of heresies. I mean, again, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to pick up stuff from this. And again, I'm, I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but I, I'm, I'm really talking to the people that like to throw the conspiracy theorist card. This is not a conspiracy theorist. This is kind of using critical thinking and putting pieces together. You know, again, Volatin, Johnson, Bickle, Joyner, Rob Bell, um, Brian McLaren, all these remember that heart symbol inside the picture and that guy with all the arms we have that shiva the destroyer in front of um our art center in reading since bethel got here and that heart with the little set of crowns or whatever coming around it we'll show you that in a minute to prove saint germain do i think a lot of them will Probably not, because the Bible is very explicit about the last days of falling away and apostasy. The Bible is very clear about it being a narrow road, a narrow gate, and few find it, as opposed to the wide road and the, and the wide gate. You know, um, of course, I hope everybody gets, you know, everybody that's in error comes out of it and gets saved. I know everybody's not going to get saved. That's a given, you know, because some people truly hate God, but... These videos I'm doing are not to jab at these people. You know, it's not hate. It's it's my motive is to warn. Is in because I love people and I don't want to see people deceived. Um, I'm going to read this really quick. Um, Genesis three one through seven, and you know it kind of goes with what Valentin Valentin talks about. I cannot get into the exegetical context of the sons of God. I encourage you guys as Bereans to please go and study the, the context out for yourselves. But the Bible says in Genesis 3, 1 through 7, now the serpent, the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Indeed, has God said, Ye shall not eat from any fruit of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, From the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat. But from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat from it or touch it lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, you surely shall not die, for God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate. And she also gave to her husband with her and he ate. When the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. Um... I, you know, I a lot of people, I think, that don't know context like to throw, well, the Bible contradicts itself. Well, again, I, I urge you guys, I don't want to make this video too long, and I'm really, I don't consider myself a Bible teacher. So I encourage you guys, I think the Holy Spirit is enough if we truly seek him to teach us. That's why one of the reasons, really, that the Lord Jesus sent him. Okay, she's doing her own talking thing. So remember that heart with the thing right there. And remember St. Germain's face. So inside the QAnon conspiracy theory groups, they pass around this video that's called I Pet Goat 2. That video is supposed to be all the symbolism of all the stuff that's going on. Let me show you that St. Germain rides out on the boat of Anubius with his third eye open. Awakening. That's the Great White Brotherhood of Light Awakening. That's the New Apostolic Reformation Awakening. This is the Lotus Flower. See how that letter C is inside white? That Lotus Flower represents Lucifer. Now watch what happens. The water gets stirred. And then let's see. Sorry, I can't say 
go. This version. guys know how Bethel's always saying fire 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 and that was just fire coming out of Lucifer's mouth they're gonna say that's Jesus in in Anubius's boat in Nubius or Nubius was um, Egyptian and scripture says we're not supposed to do the things that the Babylonians did or the Egyptians did this is all Luciferian stuff talking about that same thing that Chris Valentin is teaching this is the androgynous God. This is the Freemason, the New Age. This is the man of lawlessness that must be revealed before the coming of Yeshua HaMashiach, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We came back over here to Mark Neas' page again and see how the top left-hand corner is one of his books called Lotus Path right central sun guided meditation the seven rays of the great white brotherhood of light see the templar cross inside that one right there this is the vf healing is violet flame These guys are the light workers. This is Lucifer. Remember, Lucifer is a title that is given. See, he's even selling jewels. Mount Shasta has diamonds with no flaws. See how much that guy looks like the guy in the video? This is who um, General Flynn and Elizabeth Clare Prophet were praying to. Is this guy St. Germain? This is who Kanye West, when he sold his soul to the devil and he had to sign his contract in blood, this is the person he met with to be able to sell his soul. The 
love you guys. Come out of the Beast of Babylon. That would be this guy's system. And don't touch the neck currency. It's St. Germain's World Trust. Established in 1729. King Solomon's Cursed Gold. The Mark of the Beast. The proof that the, the 666 talents of gold per year for 40 years that um, King Solomon was on the throne. That 2 million pounds of gold is on the TV show The Curse of Oak Island. The TV show The Curse of Oak Island is owned by the History Channel. Patty Hearst, that owns the History Channel and St. Germain, only live about 15 minutes away from each other. Uh, maybe 20. You have to go from the Wintune property in McLeod down to St. Germain's Shasta Water, Shasta Springs um, Retreat Center that's down in Dunsmere, but it's still on the foot of Mount Shasta. So I love you guys. Don't touch the next currency. Come out of Bethel. They're teaching the Ascended Master Fallen Angel Doctrine, and these are the proofs that I can be able to put together as best I can. I love you guys. Don't fall for the cult. Go back to the teachings inside scripture. The faith once preached that we are to earnestly contend for and warn our siblings that these guys are liars.